Hey there Gunpla fans of YouTube, it's time for another Gunpla review. Today I'm taking a look at an older Master Grade, one of the few G Gundam Master Grades that exist. This is The Shining Gundam from Mobile Fighter G Gundam. This was the first Mobile Fighter for, for the lead character Domon Kashu. This came out as a Master Grade kit in 2002 and goes for the economical price of 2500 yen, which is on the bottom end of the price range for Master Grades. The G Gundam Master Grades were, were unique in a few ways compared to other kits from the time. Uh, for one, these kits were one of the first Master Grades to have a full inner frame, minus the head. The frames for the G Gundam kits were mostly the same throughout the line and used screws for keeping the joints tight. Um, they, with only a few slight differences between the kits. These fans were pretty re pretty revolutionary at the time as they demonstrated a level of, of articulation and action posing that wasn't known before. And they were quite impressive, until you put the armor on. These kits also featured a collapsible chest which is supposed to be for getting the kits into a uh, crossed arm pose. Uh, Although often, oftentimes found this is more troublesome than it was worth, as pretty much any time you handle the kit, uh, you will in, you will inadvertently collapse the chest as you're uh, posing it, and this gets uh, kind of annoying after a while. The other unique aspect of these kits was the usage of uh, rubber parts for the hands and the uh, foot soles. I'll admit that even back then I thought this was a little strange. Um, I kind of understand the idea of using a more grippy material for the feet. However, these kits are so lightweight that it doesn't really make any difference here. The hands themselves are just not good. I don't see the point of having these uh, rubber hands over plastic uh, fixed post hands. There really isn't a practical way for the average hobbyist to uh, paint these um, or even try to panel line them all, all that well. I guess guess maybe a uh, band I thought that the uh, builders were going to treat these kits like action figure toys and have them punch other kits or something like that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, since I'm on the hands, I guess I'll go over the accessories, which there really isn't that much. Uh, for these unfortunate rubber hands, you do get a pair of uh, closed fist. You get a pair of saber holding hands and a pair of open pose hands for the various martial art poses you're supposed to do with this kit. For the signature shining finger attack, you do get a pair of neon clear green hands. These are pretty nice looking and yes, they are UV reactive. You can see them kind of glow glowing right there. The shining gun's only armaments are a pair of beam sabers that are held on the left uh, skirt armor right here. Uh, you get a one long beam saber and one short beam saber with their respective uh, pink beam saber blades. The kit does also come with a figurine of Doman Cashew. It's the softer rubber plastic material and as you see this will require painting. Uh, many of the really older Master Grade kits came with these type of uh, character figurines like this. Um, this was just something that never really personally interested me all that much so I never really painted any of these but but you do get this here. And just on, on that note, there is no uh, scaled pilot figure that comes with this kit. Just for your information, I don't think there was any that came with any of the uh, G Gundam kits, so you pretty much just had these little figurines instead. Yeah, the only other thing I'll probably mention, even though it's not really an accessory, you do get a secondary set of uh, V-fin and this flat piece for the head. Uh, the difference is that this what I have on here is a regular hard yellow plastic. This here is a softer plastic material. So again, it's kind of like Bandai was thinking somebody was going to treat this like an action figure toy where <laughs> you don't want any of these things to break, but you do have the option of using these if you want. If you're actually painting your kit, you can pretty much throw those away. Now in terms of markings that come with this kit, you do get a set of foil stickers. They're going to be for the eye and the head camera. And you do get stickers for the black portions, the black stripes on the kit. The ones on the, uh, the ankle armor here and along the skirt armor here. 
Um, I would probably su suggest if you can go ahead and try to paint those because I have found that these uh, these stripy foil stickers tend to peel up, peel up and curl over time. So you might you might just want to, or, or my suggestion is to go ahead and just go ahead and paint those if you can, and try not to use these. <laughs> Now the other thing here, you do get a set of standard um, sticker markings. There's a few on here. You don't have to use these. Um, this is a kit that I think look, looks perfectly fine without these. Um, but if you want to, you can use some of them. I did use a few of them on my kit here. Uh, one thing of interesting note here, you will see that there is a backwards sticker on here. Saying G gun here. I'm going to give you guys 10 seconds to try and figure out what these are for. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the book doesn't really tell you about this, but there's a reason for these things here, and that is to that is to do this. So you can duplicate the G Gundam look inside the beam saber here. Technically it's supposed to be probably facing this way here, but so you can kind of recreate that effect there, which is actually pretty cool. I don't think most people are going to use these for that, but pretty nice that Bandai included that option. So, Okay, so let's take a look at the completed kit itself now here. Um, in case this wasn't obvious, my kit here is fully painted, uh, minus the rubber hands, obviously. Uh, for the most part, I do. The, for the most part, the kit in its bare plastic form is color accurate, as you see here. Um, like I mentioned, you will need to use stickers for these black lines on here, and of course for the eyes and the head camera here. Um, the only thing I noticed that probably was not color accurate on this kit is these vents on the back here. These are actually molded in yellow plastic. I don't know why they are, because that's completely wrong, but you probably will have to consider painting those if you just want to have like the bare minimum level of uh, accuracy here on this kit. And also this little thing here, this jewel in the middle here, this is just, just, just a uh, sticker piece. You just stick that right in there. Uh, speaking of the back here, this is the core lander that's on the back here. This will come right out pretty easily, just like that. You can fold the thruster bell up and the old cockpit piece will fold down and you've got the core lander. And now I did paint in a lot of the details on this. It doesn't really come with any of these uh, color separated areas on it here. so. Again, if you want some accuracy, you will have to paint some of that stuff here. That's just that's just really the typical norm for a older Master Grade kit. And this does open up, and you do get. Or, or there is a little bit of a Doman cashew figure in there. He does, he's not molded too well, but he's in there. So you do kind of have a pilot figure, just not really a standing pilot figure. This kit. And just pull that up, and you can just stick it kind of right back in this hole here. And it stays in pretty well. There's no no issue with it. Okay, so on to articulation here. So as you might have noticed already by now, the head is like a little loose on my kit here. Actually, it's quite a bit loose. <laughs> this is just this is just a bare plastic on plastic joint here. So I think on my kit it has uh, worn out over time. So just be aware that your mileage may vary on this here, but you can rotate around like so. Look up, look down like that, look up like so. So it's not too bad a range of articulation. These little things will move here. This is for the super mode transformation, which I'll get into a little later here. Pull those back down. Now I do have the joints on my kit. Um, they are a bit on the uh, tighter side. Of course, the only loose thing was the head here, but on the arms here, you can have full rotation, like so. Arms, I gotta be kind of careful bending these things here because it is so tight, but I can get it up to about here. You might be able to get it higher up if you loosen the joint up a bit more. Like I said on my kit, it's like very tight. It's a very tight joint on this kit. Arm, some upper arm rotation. Again, it's very tight on my kit here. I don't want to force it too much here. Elbow joint, double jointed elbow, pretty good range out of that. Uh, these little rubber hands are on ball in, so they'll move around a little bit here. Stick them in. 
the shield. This probably isn't really meant to move around too much, but you can adjust it side to side if you want, like so. I find I keep pushing these things around and I have to keep straightening them, straightening these back out again. Also, you do have also you do have a bit of a cavical joint on the kit here. It kind of works better if you bend the arm around that way you can bend it all the way like that, which is actually not too bad. On the torso here, it is on a ball joint, so there's a little bit of side to side. You can turn about that far. It's not super great, but it's okay. And again, as you see, I'm just, I'm pushing this piece in on the chest here. That's just that's just a thing that's going to keep happening. Uh, moving on down, we do have the side skirts here. They really move out of the way all that well. I kind of wish they did better than that, but that's about as far as they will go. Side skirt doesn't really go that far. It can rotate. But it doesn't really lift up that far before it hits the uh, side of the chest here. So back skirt armor can move back and forth like so. Okay, onto the onto the legs here. See how far we can uh, get a kick out of the leg here. I'm gonna try about that far. So yeah, for back in the day, this was actually pretty impressive. Nowadays. Not so much. You get a double joint in the knee, like so. And the ankle here. It's actually a pretty complicated foot on this kit here, because there's some transformation stuff involved in the foot here. But the ankle, side to side, you can get about that type of range out of it. Front to back. Doesn't really go back all that much. And the front. You can get about that far out of it. Toe. There's a little bit of a toe bend on this kit. To bend down about that far. Bend up about that much before you start getting into the transformation stuff in here. But yeah, the foot articulation is not the greatest. It's okay, but it's not... It's not anything all that amazing, especially compared to modern kits. Alright, so as, as I've shown there, I mean... The articulation on this kit is not as great as what as probably what you would want out of a mobile fighter master grade. Um, I know the action frame underneath has pretty good range of articulation. They actually kind of demonstrate that in the instruction manual for the kit. But once you put all the external armor on the kit, it really kind of acts as a hindrance to the to the actual mobility of the action frame. The other thing I do want to mention, and mention as an older Master Grade, this, this does not have a adjustable hip mechanism inside the hip here, hip, hip there, like a lot of the newer Master Grades have. So the hip joint is also kind of limited in that aspect as well. So, so yeah, I mean, as much as this was touted as being a very poseable kit back in the day, it really, it really isn't all that poseable, especially compared to a newer kit. All right, so let's talk about the transformation into super mode. So, in case you don't know about the uh, G Gundam mobile fighters here, there's a couple of different power modes they have. Um, well, the Shining Gundam has a couple different ones. They have the, there's super mode and there's hyper mode. Super mode is basically the transformation of the Shining Gundam, as I'll show you here. Hyper mode is when the Gundam turns gold entirely, like a Super Saiyan, almost so. But we're going to do the super mode transformation because that's what you can do with the kit here. Now I would suggest go ahead and taking the head off. It will make this uh, next part a little bit easier here. Set the uh, torso aside here. So for a super mode here, there's a couple things you got to do here. So you do want to take this uh, face plate off because this has to transform. This is basically a part swap here. It's going to pull this piece off like so. And what you have is a couple of other parts that will simulate the uh, mouthpiece opening up here. So just kind of stick those on. There's two of these. Find the other one here. Stick that on. And now you have the open face gimmick. These little uh, flaps will come out like so. And now you have the super mode head. Go ahead and set that aside for a moment. Alright, so on the main body here, what you want to do is kind of carefully flip up 
this pull up on these little parts here on the shoulders. They should come up. I need to uh, kind of wiggle them a little bit here to get them to move, but I'm going to pop these up. See that nice little gold under here? Uh, these parts come in yellow plastic, by the way, not gold. This is all painted in here, so I used a gold paint for that. Just so you know, uh, these little um, gauntlet guards, these will actually move forward here. We'll move forward just a little bit, like so. Do this to the other arm. So it comes out like that. And there actually are uh, beam guns inside the gauntlets here of the Shining Gun. I don't know if anybody actually knew that, but there, uh, there's actually a Shining Shot beam gun that comes out of here. So the uh, Shining Gun does have a ranged armament on it besides the uh, machine cannons up here. Okay, the next bit is going to be on the legs here, so these little side panels will open up. Just going to carefully open up like so. Got some little extra thrusters inside of there. And do the same on the other leg here. Open up like so. All right, the, uh, so the next bit's gonna be on the feet here. The feet here are a bit complicated here. So you gotta pull and kind of pull this front part of the foot out. Extends out like that. The back piece here will actually kind of come down just a little bit here, not too much. And these little side flaps will bend down like that. So that is your super mode foot. It's basically just extending the foot out a bit. And do the same over here. Put that down and fold that down. So there we go. And pop the head back on. And now you have super mode. All right, and that is pretty much it for the Master Grade Shining Gundam. It's there, there's like I said, there's really not a whole lot to this kit. There really really wasn't a whole lot with the uh, Master Grade G Gundam kits here. They, the main focus of these kits was their action posing capability. That was sort of the main feature of these kits here, and I feel like the Shining Gundam doesn't really live up to that expectation too well. Because as I showed, the articulation is probably one of the weaker points of this kit here. But in terms of just the general look, I think it pretty much nails the look of the Shining Gundam pretty well here. Um, it does give you a couple of nice little gimmicks here, like what they did with the uh, stickers here with the Beam Saber. I like the glowing Shining uh, Finger hands, those. And I think overall it's a pretty nice looking kit when you, when you just kind of build it. But, but like I mentioned in terms of articulation, which is kind of the thing you would kind of want to have out of a mobile fighter master grade, it doesn't really excel in that. So, and again, this is kind of a very, open, this, this is a much older master grade. So it is kind of hard to recommend this to people unless you're like a really big fan of the Shining Gundam and you want a 1100 one, one, one scale version of the Shining Gundam. If that's what you want, and this is really kind of your only reasonable option here to get this here. Other than that, if you want a shiny Gundam kit, you actually might be better off getting the 1144 high grade FC version, which I've looked at. Looks pretty comparable to this, but it also comes with the Shining Finger Sword accessory, so if you kind of want that, it comes with that also. Uh, like I said, this uh, the, the accessories aren't really aren't too much with this kit here, so so probably temper your expectations with this kit here. So anyway guys, that's going to be it for this review. I hope you enjoyed watching and you found this informative. Um, I'm going to try to keep uh, working on some reviews now and then. They're going to come. I'm, I'm trying to aim for like maybe maybe one a month here. That's what I'm trying to aim for here because these reviews do take a little bit of planning for me to do here. But anyway, thank you for watching. Um, Stay tuned, and I will uh, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.